Hello, this is Amjad Al-Mandalawi from Baghdad, Iraq, presenting a case of catheter-induced coronary dissection and the way to deal with it. He is a 55-year-old man with a stable angina was referred for diagnostic coronary angiography. A view of the left system shows some intermediate lesion in the circumflex and near normal uh, left anterior descending artery. Angiography of the right coronary in the alloyo view shows a co-dominant or a large non-dominant artery with no critical lesion. A second injection in the right anterior oblique view shows a totally occluded artery at the mid part and we can see a line of dissection. Upon review of the first injection, we can see that there is some haziness at the ostium of the right coronary artery. So probably if that was noticed initially, further injection was not done and dissection would not have progressed. So how to manage? First, avoid further direct injection of contrast. Direct injection will cause hydraulic dissection into the distal vessel and may extend dissection retrogradely into the aorta. Hemodynamic monitoring is required and depending on the size of the artery, the severity of the dissection and the amount of myocardium at jeopardy, hemodynamic support may be required. The guiding cath that should be used should avoid deep engagement. So a short tip, jetkin left or right might be used. A non-hydrophilic workhorse wire can be used to negotiate the true lumen. This is because it gives you a more tactile feedback, reducing the chance of extending the dissection by the guide wire. How to make sure that the guide wire is in the true lumen? First, the presence of resistance, i.e. the tactile sensation you feel by the wire. So the resistance or knuckling of the guide wire suggests that you are in the false lumen. If the wire passes easily into multiple smaller branches, this may suggest a true lumen. However, in extensive dissection, it might be difficult to make sure of that. IVAS is very important to confirm the wire position. If you can see that the IVAS catheter is in the false lumen, leave it in a place and use another wire guided by this IVAS. Another way is to do tip injection through an over-the-wire balloon or a microcatheter to visualize the distal vessel. And this we may show you in another presentation, in another case. However, if your catheter is in the false lumen, this might extend the dissection. So what we did, we tried to negotiate the true lumen. We, as you see, we have two, two wires. One of them uh, seemed to be extra luminal, was knuckling. The other was reassuring. And to make sure which one was uh, in the correct position, we went on for doing IVAS. This is a view of the IVAS of the wire that is extra luminal. We can see the catheter outside the true lumen and the true lumen looks clear with new with intima and media without atherosclerosis. This is the IVAS catheter in the true lumen over the other wire and it's clear that it's intraluminal. Here we can show you the near pullback of the IVAS catheter. This is the distal part. Here is the, sorry, some, some hematoma. Extending at the distal part or mid part and we can see the wire is in the hematoma. Extra luminal here will change into the other position. Here is some artifact and then extension of the hematoma is clear up to the ostium of the right coronary. So the dissection clear started from the ostium of the right coronary artery. After making sure that you are intraluminal, then comes the role of stenting. The IVAS can identify the size of the vessel and hence the size of the stent. 
it also can identify the proximal and distal edges of dissection. If the distal edge of dissection can be identified, then stenting should start from distal to proximal and use a stent that is longer than the distal edge with a margin of 5 mm to avoid compressing and propagating the hematoma more distally. So in our case, we we did three stenting starting from mid to the osteal, and this is the final result. Messages from this case, catheter-induced dissection can occur even in an apparently normal vessel. Avoid deep engagement and try to wire the true lumen without further contrast injection. When available, IVAS is the best method to confirm wire position in the true lumen. And thank you.